Alright, uh, thanks for watching. This is the M3UCH Modding Camp, Lesson 2, Mapping Outdoor Areas. I'm your host, Jack Murphy, also known as Surge on Steam in most forums. Anyway, uh, we've had a couple de technical difficulties, what else is new, um, today, so I'm going to be moving a little bit faster here. I'm going to still try and cover everything important, but everyone's been sitting in the dark for 10 minutes and I'm sure they're anxious to actually get the learning, so let's get right to it. Um, today we're going to be using Sources DK content. I'm going to close out of all this because this is something I was working on before. Yep, get out of here. We are going to be using our first map that we worked on last week, or last lesson, where we created two simple rooms with some props and some lighting. Okay, this texture here is a uh, leftover from an experiment we did with custom textures a little while ago that didn't work out too well. So I'm going to fix this back to brick just to keep uh, continuity through everything. So here we are, zero, zero, boom. Okay, fine. Ta-da! So as I was saying before I cut out, we're going to cut a door here. So select this wall, use your clipping or cutting tool, however you want to call it, and make a fairly large doorway. So again, cut it up into three parts. Three parts, there we go. Choose the middle part, drag it up. There we go, we got our doorway. Now I'm gonna create a outside area adjacent to this room. As I explained before, all areas of a map in source needs to be airtight, fully enclosed. Even if it's outdoor. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but it's important. So here we go, one, two, three, I'm gonna make a square room, 512 by 512. Um, whoops, I didn't check the height there, so my ground is floating in the sky. I'm gonna go to the side view and I'm gonna readjust that so it fits better. There we go, lined up with the floor properly. And again, I'm using no draw because I wanna have my map nice and optimized so it can run on everyone's computer nicely. And now I'm gonna create walls to surround the room that's one wall. Now I'm going to use I'm going to use shift and drag to duplicate these brushes and create three walls surrounding the room here. We already have a fourth wall that we created in the last lesson. I'm just going to use that and I'm just going to give it a brick texture and that's going to be the back wall of this building we just walked out of. And next I need a ceiling to fully encase this room and make it ready. There we go. Now we have our room. Now this doesn't feel like outside, it feels kind of weird, it sounds very counterintuitive to what you want to create for an outdoor area. But um, I guess everyone cut out before I showed this, but um, anyway, here's my first visual aid. I made these in like five minutes last night, so, you know, don't judge me too hard. But here we go. This is basically my brief example of what a room is. Um, the room on the left is an indoor room and the door on the right is an outdoor area. But yet, in reality, they are both the same exact room, just with different textures. Uh, the one on the left is tight and feels very claustrophobic, and the one on the right feels very open and bright and sunny and makes the player feel really happy and free. But as I explained, they are both the same exact room, both uh, enclosed, no doors, no windows, very boring. It's actually just all an illusion that creates the sense of openness and outside. So, anyway, back to this. So here's our enclosed room. What really makes this illusion happen, what makes the magic happen, is a special texture called Tools Sky Texture. So, I'm going to open up the texture editor, I'm going to browse, and I'm just going to search sky. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Now the chat's kind of covering a little bit, it a little bit, but here it is: Tools Skybox. You can't read that here. There's also 2D Skybox and Sky Fog. Those are a bit more advanced, and you don't exactly need to know about those right now, so we're not going to cover those. Anyway, 2D Skybox. This is the texture that we want. We're going to apply it to all the walls that will expand into the infinite sky. So I'm going to choose the wall in front of us, wall to the left, wall to the right, and our ceiling. I'm going to give those skybox texture. So there we are, this light blue skybox texture is going to... So any wall here will not feel like a wall. 
it'll feel like it goes off infinitely into the sky, which will create the illusion of outside. And also to add to that illusion, I'm going to give this ground here a uh, more nature feeling. I'm going to have this one be an extension of the indoor tile. And here, it's going to be, I'm just going to do a search for grass. Uh, a good texture I found that works pretty well is blend ground to grass, this one right here. Hit apply. Now this doesn't look like grass, but I'm going to be getting into, into that later. Um, so here we are, outdoor texture, and I'm going to give this wall some bricks. The same bricks as we used inside. And the same ceiling texture here. Okay, so when we walk out into this room, which felt like just a um, tight enclosed room, will now feel like a floating up plot of land that is hanging over the horizon and there's just infinite sky out in the distance. And when we turn around, we can see the wall of the building we just came from. But um, I don't want to exactly want that sort of uh, feeling of having this just drop into sky, like as if you're floating on an island or something. I want to have a fairly decent sized wall to surround the perimeter of this room here to kind of make it feel more like you're inside a walled off backyard and that there's actually, you know, that you're on the ground and that there could possibly be a whole nother world out there. So anyway, let's get to creating that wall. Okay, a lot of you missed how to turn no draw into the skybox. Again, it's simply just putting a wallpaper on, or just changing the texture. Like here, I'll go inside here. If I wanted to get rid of the ceiling in this room, and instead make it look like the ceiling was ripped off and is open to the sky, all I do is I open up the texture editor. Again, this is a tool we used to, we learned to use in the last lesson, so if you aren't familiar with this, you should catch up on that lesson first. Click on the ceiling, and then again I did a browse, and I browsed sky and the texture we want is all the way at the bottom and it's just called tools skybox click that hit apply and boom that's it it's just like putting another texture on I can click that I can give it uh, the floor texture on the ceiling I can give it the brick texture it's just all you're doing is just giving it a new texture just for outside you want to give it tools skybox what that does is it creates an optical illusion that makes it feel like this wall doesn't exist and instead extends infinitely into the space or into into the sky but I don't want that inside I want this to be the normal uh, ceiling there so again that's all I did out here all the walls were no draw I just gave them that special texture so here we are again it doesn't look like sky inside hammer but when we play the map in Gary's mod or TF2 or something this will feel like it goes infinitely into the sky alright anyway I hope that clarified any uh, questions you may have had here we go let's go back into building that wall because like I said I don't want to have the I don't want the player to feel like he's in some sort of floating through like two room contraption in the sky I want him to feel like he's grounded in sort of some obviously not a very functional building but still something more believable that's grounded on earth and that there could be possibly a whole nother world out there so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a wall surrounding the perimeter here I'm going to choose no draw because I'm creating some new brushes and again I want my map to be optimized so I'm going to create a nice little thin wall here and I want it to be a decent height so I'm going to bring it down to the ground I'm going to make it about the same height as the doorway here turn there we are so it's about the same height as the doorway I'm gonna hit enter now the wall selected I'm gonna to want to make another wall so I'm gonna again use shift drag another wall on the other side and now one last wall here shift drag and then resize by clicking and dragging the corners there we go now I have a nice little uh, stone texture already picked out for this wall here. I'm going to do one, two, three, choose all of our walls. Browse, I'm just going to do a browse for stone. Here we are, a uh, stone wall right here. This is a nice stone wall. It has a top lip, bottom lip, it looks good. Select it, apply. What's also nice is it also perfectly fits this wall already. 
so we don't need to do any tweaking for that. Um, let's see here. Now I'm going to also give this stone texture to the tops. All right, that looks decent, but we could actually have this look better. Right here, you'll notice that um, the texture alignment, which is kind of hard to explain, but basically this doesn't look necessarily like a very accurate stone wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this top one here. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, you'll see it'll look a whole lot better once I do this. I'm going to use uh, texture rotation up here. We haven't really touched on what many of these things are. I'll kind of go over that right now. Texture scale is how big the texture is applied in both X and Y, or width and height. So here, I'll start scaling up X so you can see what it does. See, stretches it out long ways. I'm going to set it back to 0 0.25. And if I do it in Y, which is height, it starts stretching it upwards. So if you want to help a uh, texture fit to a certain... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, if you want your texture to fit onto a brush accurately, you can use that to tweak it. So aside from scale, you can also do texture shifting. So shifting will move it left to right and up and down like here. I'm moving X value up so you see it start to move to the left. And then if I do the same with Y, it'll start moving up. It starts off slow and then gaining speed as you go. So there we go. But um, I don't really want that. It was already lined up just right. So I'm going to set everything back to their default values. Um, if you have a really interesting texture that you want to have fit, I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but uh, this is important stuff here. I'm going to do that. Like I'm going to choose a new texture for this. I'm going to do, um, let's say, something like a sign. Mm. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? I'm going to do vent. Okay, let's uh, do something like this just an air vent apply now that looks you know it's tiled it's repeated I don't want that I want this whole brush to look like an air vent I can tweak it by making it larger so that it fits and then I have to shift it anyway <clears throat> it's a lot of work requires a lot of tweaking there's a very quick shortcut key for that 0.25 so I'm gonna set everything back to normal just hit fit if you hit fit Boom, it automatically stretches the texture out to perfectly fill the area or the face of that brush. <clears throat> Again, this will come into handy later, not exactly for this lesson, but considering what I'm doing here with the wall, I thought if I'm going to explain some of these, I might as well explain all of them. Well, not all of them, but some of the more used ones. So I'm going to set these back to normal so that wall looks good. Never matter. Uh, again, you can mess around with some of these on your own. Justify kind of, uh, this determines where the texture lines up against the wall and fit stretches it as I explained. Anyway, that's again more advanced. I'll try and uh, do that later. Anyway, uh, rotation. That was another one of the properties we were working on. If I do rotate, you can see there it goes. It's very awkward and doesn't look good for this wall. But what we're going to be using it for is this wall is 90 degrees with this wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the texture that's on top of this wall 90 degrees. There. Now, as you can see here, it looks a lot better. It looks like it flows right in from that other one. Again, I'll do a before and after. This is 90 degrees. That was the default. So as you see, it's a much more harder break in the textures there. So if I do 90, it, they line up with each other. That one can stay where it is, and I'm going to do the same on this other wall. But since this wall is facing the other way, I'm going to do negative 90. Again, these are degrees of rotation, so that's 90 degrees or a right angle. 90 degree rotation, these two walls are 90 degrees from this wall, so that's why I did that. Again, you can experiment it with your own, you just kind of have to play with it, see, feel how it works. So anyway, now that we have our wall created, uh, we're almost done where we can uh, test out our first outdoor area. We need to create lighting. Um, for our previous map, we used what's called um, environment lights, or environment underscore light, I believe. Or no, they're just called lights. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. So these are just plain lights. These are naked light bulbs. No shading, no nothing, nothing obscuring them. They're just super bright, and they emit light in all directions. We have one here, here, and here. 
Now, the sun, oh yeah, there it is. The sun, obviously, is a lot different than a giant light bulb. We can't really light outside with one of those. So we need to create a, a, um, a special entity called environment light. That's, the environment, the environment light comes into play now. So anyway, here we are. I'm gonna zoom out a little. We see we have our two rooms and here's our outdoor area. I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna put the environment light here. It doesn't need to be outside. I'm gonna raise it in the air a little bit. The environment light, or the light environment, I'm sorry. Again, to find that, just do a search and do your property list here for light. And the chat's blocking it right now, but light environment will show up. Choose that. And hit enter. So again, this, as we see here, light underscore environment can be placed anywhere in the map. It doesn't need to be outside, it could be anywhere. Just make sure that you have at least one. And I think only one. If you have two of them, that'll screw things up. So anyway, we have our first light here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to hit enter, show you the properties page really quick. This is what it'll look like. Basically, the um, light environment works like this, whereas the lights on their own emitted light in all directions from that one point, light environment, what that does is it basically, any wall that has the blue uh, sky texture will have sun rays coming through it, sunlight. Now, so basically all these walls are um, giant light emitters. Anything that is exposed to these walls will have sunlight on them. If I put, if I went in here and changed the ceiling to the sky texture, then sunlight would now come through the ceiling here and illuminate this room with sunlight. Now this thing here actually determines the behavior of the sunlight. When I say behavior, I mean the color, the brightness, and what angle the sun is shining at. So like, you know, the sun will be directly up in the sky at high noon and it will be lower in the sky during the evening and cast stronger shadows because it's lower in the sky. So this determines what angle, again, what angle, what brightness, and uh, what color the sun comes from, the sunlight. Um, right down here is the brightness. I'm not going to mess with that because the defaults are pretty decent for a uh, nice sunny day. 25, 20, or 255, 255, 255, that's red, green, and blue. They're all maxed out, which means white. We covered this in the last uh, tutorial. And 200 is your standard brightness. So again, I'm not going to touch that, but if you want, you could uh, turn the brightness up if you want a more tropic feeling map and have it sunnier and brighter. Yes? Your Raffi has a question. Every sky. Yes, every sky texture will be affected by the entity. Just all you need is one light environment in your map, and suddenly any texture that has, or any wall that has the sky texture here, will emit sunlight. You can put it on the floor, on the walls, wherever. It'll uh, create that sunlight. Sunlight will then come pouring through that wall. So, here we go. Back to this. Uh, turning the brightness up will again kind of give it a brighter, more tropic feel, a stronger sun, more saturation and washout. And a darker one will just make it feel more overcast. And if you combine darker, or if you combine lower brightnesses with darker colors, such as like a pale blue or something, you can kind of create out like outdoor maps at night with you know pale moonlight stuff like that. So that's fun to play with, and I'm not going to mess around with those there. You can mess around with them on your own. Find out what you like. Uh, what we're really going to be working with here is pitch. Pitch describes um, the angle at which the sun is coming down, as well as up here. Angle, and this is the angle of the entity. The angle here is now pointing to the right, or angle zero. What this means is that the sun is going to be shining from the left going to the right. So as it is right now, our sun is going to be, this wall here, our leftmost wall, is going to be casting shadows to the right into the yard. So what I want is I want to have a bit more dramatic sun. I want it to point up into the left. So that way we get some more interesting shadows. Both our right wall and our bottom wall here will be casting shadows up into the left into this court into this courtyard here again they have explained it this angle up here is pointing up into the left so that means our Sun is over here pointing up into the left it doesn't mean our Sun is necessarily here our Sun is very very far away it doesn't actually exist it's infinite distance off in space so just imagine this entire map sun sunlight no matter where it is in the map 
is going to be pointing up into the left. So anyway, there it is. You can even play with it on your own maps, find out what angles work best for you. And next is pitch. This is, I believe, where I was when we got cut off last time. Or not cut off, last time when I finally learned we got cut, cut off. So here we are. I'm going to bring up my other uh, visual aid, if you want, can call it that. Sun angles. Negative 90 is straight down. This is sort of like high noon. There's no shadows because the sun is shining directly down on everything. Negative 70 is a bit more of an angle. The sun's a bit lower in the sky and therefore casts a bit more. You can actually notice shadows. And then another example is like negative 45, a lot more shadows. And zero means that the sun is on the horizon and it is uh, shining straight across the ground. That will not look good in most cases unless you want to have like a sunset map, you know, a map during a sunset and most likely at a horizon like a uh, like a beach or something where you can actually see the sun setting on the horizon. Um, any if you try and use that anywhere else, it'll be a very dark map. I mean, it's not to say you can't do it, just you have to keep that in mind. So again, negative 90 is hardly any visible shadows because the sun is shining directly down on everything and zero is completely flat. The sun is on the horizon. So everything in between that is different sun positions in the sky. I hope that kind of uh, gives that a picture or helps you picture that a little bit. So um, pitch, I'm gonna give it a pitch of negative 65. That's a pretty strong angle there. So we should see some pretty definitive shadows. I'm gonna hit apply. So now we have our sun's direction and our sun's angle, sun pitch. So again, if your angles, if your pitch is a positive number, like 65 instead of negative 65, that means your sun is under the is under the horizon and it is shining upwards from below the level. You could probably think of some cool stuff to do with that, but for right now, that'll really break the uh, realism of this map, if you can say it has any realism. But anyway, it's going to break the illusion and it's going to feel kind of weird. So that's why I have my negative value. So the sun is so the sun is shining down. Okay, I've applied everything. We have what we need. Uh, we have a, a room, airtight room, with our sky texture and our light underscore environment. I'm going to compile the map here, uh, set everything to fast because this is just for uh, testing. We don't need it to look super pretty. It's compiling off in the other monitor, so I can't really show you it. There we go. Okay, it just finished. We're done. So now I'm going to open up Gary's mod and we're going to test out our level. All right, I'm going to try and check on the chat here for a bit. Okay, yes, to just read iterate what uh, Saber had said. The sun entity can be put anywhere. Anywhere in the map and it only needs to be one. If you put more than one it'll screw up things. And no, the angle will not depend on the position of the entity. The angle depends on the angle that you set inside the property page. So here we are. Again, uh, our sun doesn't exist anywhere in the map like the actual sun does not exist in the map the um, sun exists in some far off infinite place that doesn't really exist it's just that um, you just put the environment sunlight or the environment you know the light environment entity in your map just to let the map know hey my map is outside and it's gonna need sunlight that's all it does it doesn't actually that entity doesn't affect its position in the map where you put it does not affect how the sun lights the level. So anyway, here we go. Start new game. Other. Other. Okay, first map.
Okay, so here we are in our level. Walk around, this all looks familiar. Here's our room, there's our dark, our red hallway with our dark room. Come back and then we turn right. And ah, look at this, walk outside, beautiful. Here we are, looks like it goes on forever as we walk over to this wall. Feels like we could hop over there, maybe see the neighbors. Anyway, we can see here that our light is uh, casting shadows, not very strong shadows. But if I increase the pitch, the shadows would extend further out into the into the room here. Uh, it'll look a little glitchy just because that room has no draws on the on the outside. We need to hide that if we want this to be look if we want this to look pro more professional. But again, this is just kind of demonstrating how to make an outdoor map. So here we are, but we aren't done yet. So we want next step we're going to do is we're going to show how to change the sky texture because right now it's kind of ugly. It uh, looks kind of warped and stretched over there. It's uh, very overcast, doesn't feel very good. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna disconnect, and I'm gonna go back into Hammer. Here we are. So again, uh, well, the last time I'm gonna reiterate on this, it's uh, not that hard to wrap your mind around it. Uh, this light environment, this is not actually a sun. If it was here, this would be super bright, uh, would all be burning and dying. So this is just a entity that says, that tells your map, hey, my map goes outside at some point and I'm gonna need sunlight. I can put this in the ground. I can put this, well, probably not a good idea to put it in the ground because I don't know if your map will recognize it, but still I can put this inside with the truck. I can put this in the dark room, it doesn't matter. Just as long as one of them is somewhere in my map. What is important and what determines the angles of the sun is the property page of the entity. Here it is, angles up here in the top right and the pitch down here in the fields. Those are the two things that determine the sun, not the actual sun entity itself. So anyway, here we are. And when I say the sun exists in a far off distant place that doesn't actually exist, I mean the sun that it actually emits the light, the celestial sun that we're talking about here, not the entity or anything like that. So uh, let's see here. Here we are. What I was going to do next is going to change the map uh, skybox. So what we're going to do next is we're going to find out uh, or we're going to go look for a texture that we want. So I'm going to do browse sky. So now I'm just going to go down this list until I find a nice blue sky that could be used for a sunny day. Just keep going down. Now you'll see lots of uh, pictures here that look identical. They aren't exactly identical, it's just uh, what happens is um, a cube is made up of six sides and a sky box, or these images here of skies, need six images. One for the top of the sky, one for the bottom of the sky, and four for front backwards, left, and right of the sky. And they all create a cube that wraps around you and creates the illusion of a sky. So again, I'm going down. Whoa, okay, we're starting to get into the TF2 skies here. I think, uh, I think Dust Bowl, now let's do a Gold Rush. Gold Rush seems to be a kind of a nice bright level. You know, got some clouds in there, but mostly blue skies. So what you do is you take note of its name, sky, underscore gold rush underscore zero one these last two uh, letters here at the end those aren't really important for what we need FT means front LF means left RT means right these are basically for the game engine themselves this tells it which part of the sky this texture is for so this would be the front part of the sky if you're looking forward left right back um, this is up so anyway there we go. What we really want is the name sky underscore gold rush underscore zero one. So I'm going to remember that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any real way to copy it so you can paste it. You just have to kind of devote it to memory, the sky that you want. And then what I'm going to do, close out of that, go up to map and map properties. When you do that, it'll select your entire map which is a little weird, but you can just deselect it later. <clears throat> anyway, uh, your whole map as itself is actually its own entity called the world. So anyway, 
uh, this contains its properties. And here we are, skybox texture name. This will determine what texture or what sky our outdoor areas will use. So again, I believe it was sky underscore gold rush underscore zero one. I believe that's what it was. If you do it wrong, you're going to see some really trippy uh, like distortions in your sky when you try and play your map. Sky underscore gold rush zero one. <clears throat> I'm going to just verify that is what it was called. Sky underscore gold gold rush underscore zero one. Yep, that's what it was called. So when I run the map, it should look it should have that new uh, sky texture. So again, uh, that was map map properties, and then skybox texture name. That's where you type in the new texture or the new sky name that you want and hit apply. You don't need the last two because the uh, are the last two letters that determine left, front, back, because the engine will figure that out itself. <laughs> These will go into more later. We don't need to worry about that right now. Just hit apply, and we're done. Again, our whole map is selected because we went to map properties. Just click anywhere outside of the selection there, and we're back to normal. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Next, we're going to work into uh, how to make terrain, which is, when I say terrain, I mean like hills, valleys, slopes, you know, because when you go outside, not everything's flat. You know, that you have rises, you have dips. So we're going to work into uh, creating those. These are called, uh, when we create some as a terrain, it's actually called a displacement. Here, I'll show you. We'll go to the texture editor here. I'm going to click on the ground that we want to make into a terrain or you know make it feel more organic and outdoorsy click on that go to displacement tab up here you may have been wondering what that was displacement and create now it's going to ask us a power the power basically describes how detailed your grounds gonna be that's kind of hard to explain so here I'll just show you I'm gonna start off power 2 it's the lowest we can go Boom. Okay, now we see our ground has these white lines running through it. It's been diced up into a grid. As I go ahead and increase the power here, apply, it becomes a more detailed grid. And again, I'll move it up to four. Boom. Four is the highest you can go. So now we have a very complex grid here. I'm going to move it back down to two for simplicity's sake. Now, what does this grid do? This grid is basically describes how you can manipulate the ground now. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to destroy this uh, displacement, which turns it back into a flat brush. And I have to uh, describe something else here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a, uh, a brush off in space here to kind of give you an example of what's going on when we create a displacement. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a rather large brush out here in the middle of nowhere. And I'm going to create the top part to be a displacement. Click on that. Displacement. Create. Power of 2. When I do this, all the sides, except for the one that I chose to be a displacement, has disappeared. Oh, so the brush itself, itself still exists in its original size. As you can see here, I can still, you know, stretch and make it taller shorter but we don't see anything because all the other five sides have disappeared they no longer matter to the engine I can undo this by destroying the displacement making it back into a normal face and the brick come or the block comes back I can choose multiple faces when I create a displacement and those will stay but everything else will disappear uh, the reason it does this is that um, <clears throat> it affects the lighting, basically. If, uh, if I chose every face on this and made it a displacement, create displacement, this would look really bad because if, especially if, uh, actually I can get rid of this now that I've used the example. So delete. I'll go back in here. I've seen this done in maps before where, some, where someone will uh, choose all the sides of a block here, all the sides of a brush, and make them all displacements. Even though the only side that the player is going to see is the top one here. 
So even though this is the only one that the players is gonna, player is going to see, all the other sides of this brush are still displacements. What that does is one, it makes the map more complicated and therefore uh, runs uh, doesn't run as well. And two, it affects the lighting. So you'll have really strange lighting on the ground. What the engine does is it smooths out the lighting from one displacement, like this side here, to this side here. If this wasn't a no draw, if this had like a dirt texture as well, it would smooth out the lighting from here to here. Now this wall will be extremely dark because there's no light touching it, and this side will be extremely bright because the sun shine on it. So when the game smooths out the lighting, you'll have a really weird gray area here for no reason. So again, I'm going to destroy these, turn it back into a normal brush. So basically what I'm trying to get at here is when you make displacements, you really have to think ahead of time. It takes a little bit of getting used to, and it definitely takes a lot of planning. But when you do it right, it looks really good. So again, I'm just going to choose this top side here, not the rest of it, just this one side that the player is going to see. Click Create, Dis power, or Displacement Power of 2. Actually, not. I'm going to kick it up to 3. Let's make it a little bit more detailed. Um, a little note here, 4 is not good for actual playability. If you want to create more advanced things like uh, effects, like if you want to create a waterfall or rushing rapids or something, you want to create that in Power 4 so you can have it really detailed, make it look nice. But um, any displacements with the Power of 4, the player should not be able to collide with or walk on top of. It'll just be an illusion, basically. 3 is the highest we can go and still have the player collide and interact with it. Um, again, I hope I didn't lose too many people by bringing up the whole Power of 4 thing. Uh, and with the, bringing up like waterfalls and rapids and stuff, that could be for another tutorial. But um, for right now, I'm just saying don't go to power of four if you want the player to walk on it. It'd probably be a good idea to stay away from four in general until you've basically had some more knowledge on that. So power three is going to be the highest I'm going to go to. Here we are. And now let's actually start making this look like ground. The main tool you're going to use with displacements is paint geometry. I'm going to click this. And this opens up another window. This will be the effect, raise and lower. This raises and lowers the ground. Right here, if I move my mouse over the displacement, we can see this little green orb following my mouse. This is sort of like my brush. If I left click, the ground goes up. I'm on control Z to undo that. If I right click, the ground goes down, dips downward. Again, control Z to go back. Uh, these sliders here, I can choose the radius so I can make this really big so now my brush becomes bigger that's a little too big so now I, I affect more points so when I left click more points raise up so I can make nice smooth hills with this if I right click it goes down there we go so now I can make nice bowls and stuff like that in the ground I'm gonna undo all those and distance in, uh, affects how hard or how powerful your brush is. So if I crank it all the way up, all I need to do is left click once and boom, it just shoots up. I have a mountain, a spike really. So that's good for making big drastic changes, but if you wanna do more subtle changes, turn it down. So that way you can do really fine points like that. You see, nice and slow. So I can take my time and mold the ground just the way I want it. So again, I have a flat ground. Um, if you don't want to do that, there's other things like uh, there's smooth. Smooth um, basically equalizes the distance between two grounds. So here I'm going to make a really, a really tall point here. And I'm going to lower my radius down. I'm going to have a really sharp wall here, just a really jagged cliff. Ugh, that looks really weird there. So it looks very unnatural, very sharp. I want to smooth it out. I'm going to choose the smooth option and I'm going to increase my radius. So now basically what it does is everything that's inside this radius here, the sphere, it's going to find out the average distance or the average height between all of it and it's going to I guess create the uh yeah, it's going to create the average in between, therefore creating a smoothing look. So I'm going to ch point somewhere in the middle here and I'm going to left click and hold. Whoa, that happened really fast. I'm going to turn down the uh power on that a little bit. I'm going to just left click. Okay, that's still a little too fast. Left click once. Still too strong. Turn that down. Whoa, okay. 
Wow, okay, I don't even know what's happening there. That's probably because I have it at one, zero. There we go, so that's a nice middle ground. So now it averages it out. The more I click, the more average it gets and it smooths things out. Anyway, that can be useful. Uh, raise two, I believe what that does, I haven't exactly tested it too much, um, is I believe if you have a high point, let me create one here. There we go, we create a high point. If I wanna bring everything else up to this level, and I want it to be exactly that height, I do raise two. <clears throat> and now what I do is I click at the point I want everything else to be at. So I click on, I have my uh, brush here on this high point, I click. Nope, okay, I guess not. Uh, let's see here. Hmm, it seems to be dropping it. Eh. Again, I don't use this tool too much just because it doesn't seem to work the way you think it would. All right, I'm not even going to delve into that because I'm probably just going to make myself confused going into that. So anyway, paint geometry. That's basically what you're going to be using when it comes to this. Uh, if you want to create just a rough uh, terrain, you don't really care how it comes out, you can use some of these other tools here to, uh, let's see here, to do the work for you. So what I'll do right now is uh, I'll click noise. What noise does is it randomly generates uh, values for each of these points, meaning that it'll create very bumpy ground for you without having to do it yourself. Noise, I can set the minimum, so this will be the smaller or the lowest value that one of these points will be affected. So if I want, let's say I don't want any of this ground, I want the ground to remain this same height, I don't want it to go any lower. Keep it at zero. And max, let's say I'll set it to 50. So now what the computer will do is when I hit OK, it'll randomly choose numbers between zero and 50 and then assign those values, those numbers that it randomly chose, and it'll apply them to these points. So I'll hit OK and boom, there we go. Some points were raised up 30, some points were raised up 20, some points were only raised up five. But anyway, there we go. I'll undo that and I'll do noise again, and this time I'll do negative 50 and 100. So those numbers are now farther apart. So we're gonna see a much more pronounced effect. Hit okay, boom, they're a lot more jagged. So that's a really quick way to make rough bouncy terrain if you want. Anyway, here we go. On to our next thing. Uh, painting, geometry, or, uh, painting geometry and being able to make uh, the correct shapes you want is really an art and you need to really just practice with it and get to learn the feel for it. Next, let's move on to painting alpha. Before I explained how this ground, even though I chose, I did a search for grass and I chose this texture, it doesn't look like grass. Um, a lot of textures, well not a lot of them, but uh, a good majority of, or a good amount of them, uh, textures actually contain two textures inside one. Now that seems kind of weird. It's a single material, but only, but it contains two textures. This contains a dirt texture and a grass texture. We can't see the grass texture, but now that it's a displacement, we can now um, modify the, uh, I guess, visibility of these textures and how they're seen in game. And that's what's uh, called painting the alpha. So if I click on this, again, it looks like the simple, uh, well, it's not a, it's a cube now, not a sphere, but it looks, again, like we have a little brush here, uh, raised to, smooth. Um, I'm going to do raise lower. That's the main thing you want. Okay, so when I left click, it's going to... Here, I'll just show you. Left click and drag. Whoa, what's happening here? It is painting ground. Or it is painting grass. Kind of dead grass. A little too dead for my taste. But as we can see, uh, these little detail props are pointing, popping up. Let's add a little bit more here. Looking good. So anyway, now we can paint grass on here. You know, I'm going to choose a different texture just because this brown dirt going into brown grass isn't really making too much of a uh, effect here. I'm going to switch back to the material tab. I'm going to do another search for grass. Let's see if we can find something a little bit better. Let's try this one. Uh, it looks all right, but it's still a little too brown for my taste. Um, this. 
Oh, come on. So a nice, there we go, this seems to be a nice contrast. So now, paint alpha, we have our dirt, and as I left click, it paints green grass. Nice. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead, and I am going to, I've done a little two things that kind of made it look a little messy, a little sloppy. I'm going to destroy it and recreate it at power level three, just so I can start back at ground zero. I have a, a flat ground and all of its dirt. What I want to do is I want to create a nice straight path. Oh, another thing you can do is invert alpha. So if I want it to be major, like uh, if I want it to be, right now it's all dirt with some grass. If I want it to be all grass with some dirt, I do invert alpha. Now all the dirt becomes grass. You know, this is a really ugly grass. I still don't like this one. Um, let's try... Mm, I think this is the first one I did and I didn't like that. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to bite the bullet. We're going to go with it. Ah, where'd it go? Let's try this one. Okay, this is more uh, Half-Life 2 texture than it is TF2, but you know, I don't care. It's uh, very obvious to see. When we switch between the two, we got dirt, we got grass. So now that I've inverted alpha, I can paint alpha. Now if I left click, we're not going to see anything because everything's already grass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and start painting dirt. There we go. And I can turn up the value to make it faster, to make it, basically it turns in the dirt faster. There we are. There we go. So if I want, I'll turn the value down, and I can add little spots of dirt over here just for you know effects and stuff. Doesn't need to be that strong. Just add little spots here and there. There we go. So now we have outside with some dirt, and you know what? I'm going to give it even a little bit of a uh, a little bit of noise here. Zero to let's say ten. Not much, but there it gives our uh, ground a little bit of a a little bit of a bumpiness there. Uh, we have a little bit of a problem here. The displacement is going over the line here. But this is actually a good point to bring up another thing about displacements. Is that they aren't real, they aren't solid brushes. Before our ground, this room was airtight. It had walls, ceiling, and a floor. But now I've made that floor into a displacement. When I do that, the displacement no longer counts as a solid brush. I mean, when I say solid brush, I mean it doesn't, it doesn't seal the level. So now, if I tried to play this, the level will have errors because, well, there's a leak here. It doesn't have a floor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal this room by giving it another floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these walls here. I'm going to bring it down. So there, it's level with this now. These walls that I created... I'm going to need to bring these down. Okay, so here we go. This is looking more like a room again. So we drag we drag things down a little. This no draw, we're going to have to get rid of that. Because this no draw will extend off and we'll be able to see into uh, the void there. I'm going to give it just some bricks. Okay, hammer crashed. Here's my crow cross wallpaper again. So... That blows. I wonder how much we lost. Let's see here. Yeah, Hammer has a nice autosave feature, which probably means we didn't lose too much. Let's bring it back. Got to rearrange some of my windows here. Come on. Whatever. Let's uh, look around and see what we lost. Okay, not much. It looks like I had just started uh, sealing this room again. So I'm going to go ahead, click these, drag these down, so that, again, they're at the same height with this. I'm going to choose my walls here, drag them down, and then 
here's what crashed hammer. Let's hope this works this time. I'm going to give this, I'll bring that back in here, a, let's give this the same brick texture as there. Apply. Okay, it did it this time. I don't know what the problem was last time. But anyway, there we are. Bricks, the player isn't normally going to see that. But then we need, again, we can't exactly have a no draw texture because I'm not exactly sure if that'll seal the level. I don't believe it will. So here we are. We have our floor. Now we just need a solid floor this time. So here we go. I'm going to drag out the shape of the floor, give it no draw initially. OK, I didn't make it the right height. Bring it down. There we go. And now I'm going to give it, eh, I'm going to give this brick as well. There we are. The player isn't going to see it, but hey, at least it seals the map. So there we go. So now this displacement is just a, it's really just there for looks. I mean, the player can walk on top of it, and it will have the bumpy feel to it. But again, it doesn't seal the level, so that is, again, just kind of justifying why we uh, did this modification to our room and gave a floor here. Again, uh, when you're working with displacements, like I said, they take lots of planning. So if you're going to work with displace displacements, you have to check to make sure that you've, you know, I guess, uh, dyed all your I's, crossed all your T's. You know, you've taken care of all the necessities that come first. For example, closing off your map, making sure there's no leaks. Okay, I'm going to paint geometry here. When I did noise, it raised this lip up a little bit. I'm going to do paint geometry, and I'm going to right-click to lower these down just a little so they don't look bad like that. There we go. So now when we walk out, we'll be able to see down there a little. But it looks a lot better than being able to actually look under the ground and see our floor down here. So anyway, here we are. Here's our outside. I could go ahead and run and compile this, but we're not done yet. Um... We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a hill so that way the player can walk around, go up the hill and look over the wall here. I'm going to move, I'm going to extend this room downward, I'm going to make it a bit longer. I'm going to choose this wall, I'm going to move it way down a bit. Uh, let's say that far. That should be good. Actually, no, no, a little bit further. There we go. Make the player work for it. Uh, this wall. I'm going to move it down so that it butts up with our far wall down there. These two walls, I'm going to stretch them out so that they reach. Oops, looks like I made that off center a little. There we go. In the ground here, all I have to do is just stretch it. There we go. So longer, and now the reason I'm doing this is, oh yeah, I said I wanted to make a hill. These two walls here, stretch them out. Again, we gotta seal up all the uh, gaps there. So make sure they line up our ceiling. You know what, I'll, do, I'll stretch out the floor too. They're the same size. Here we go. So I believe our room is still sealed again, except it's just longer now. So now what I'm gonna do to create a hill is Instead of doing, instead of painting geometry to do, here I'll make it a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Instead of create, creating a hill like this, it's going to have some jagged edges. And also it's going to take longer to work on. I'm going to create a hill in this fashion. I'm going to create a brush down here at the edge which is going to be our hill. I want it to be, I want the bottom of the brush here. Okay, let me choose no draw. I want this to be the same, I want the bottom of this brush to match up with the height or the top of this one. So we see here that the brush we used for this displacement stop, was stopped here, this was the top. So I want the bottom of this one to come right up to that. There we go, bringing it together. I'm basically doing this because this is a very helpful technique when working with displacements called stitching. And then I'm gonna drag it out a little. 
So I'm gonna make it a little bit broader here. This is gonna be the top part of the hill. This is gonna be the, I guess the uh, the peak of the hill, and this is gonna be the actual slope. It doesn't look like a slope. It looks just like a wall. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna introduce another tool called the vertex editor. This is a very this is a more advanced tool, and it's should be used for professional use and it should be used in caution because you can really break a lot of your brushes with this if you try and be too complicated. Um, it's kind of hard to explain but I'll try and do my best. When you click on vertex tool, a vertex is basically when two, when two or more lines meet. That creates a vertex. I'll click on this and now we see here our brush is actually made of several lines or edges. And where these edges meet, this edge and that edge they create a vertex or the corner if you want to think about it. Um, <clears throat> these yellow handles are the middle of edges and these white ones are corners. So what I'm going to do is a way to shape this hill into more of a slope that the player can walk up. I'm going to click on, the, on this corner and this corner and now in the side view I can drag these corners outward like that and now we have a ghost vision of sort of what our shape will look like. It won't be confirmed until I hit the selection tool. And I'll hit that, and boom. I could have used the cutting tool to get the same shape, but I feel like it's about time I touched on the vertex tool because it is very handy. When I say you have to be careful with it, here's an example. I'll open up the vertex tool again. I'll choose this corner and I will drag it up. There, and now I'll hit select. There, I've now broken my brush. You see how this angle here, how, or let's see here. No, I'm gonna lower that vertex just a little because it's a, uh, there we go. Gonna be a little confusing here. There we go. You'll notice here that it's flat on this half. This top part of the hill is a rectangle. A rectangle can also be made up of two triangles. What I mean by that is here, let me uh I'm gonna have to do this visual aid on the spot here. Imagine Yeah, here we are. This is our rectangle. Now even though in hammer we see it as just a flat rectangle normally. What is actually happening is in, um, in the engine it has to cut everything up into triangles. Triangles are the smallest basic shape are called polygons. This is more about 3D modeling and I'll go into this more later but these two things kinda go hand in hand. Uh, so this is the top face of the brush we made. What it's actually um, doing is it's actually two triangles it's cut diagonally like that. So one triangle there, one triangle there. So when I raise the point up like that, this point here is now the only point, this point's up and these three points are down. The triangle or how the brush is cut, again, is diagonally from this corner to that corner. It's harder to see it with no draw, so you know, I'm gonna switch the texture to a grid so the effect is more pronounced. There we go. You can see the jut, the change here. This area, this triangle is flat, and this triangle is slanted upwards. Brushes don't work like that. The face of a brush needs to be flat and smooth, like this one. This, this side here is also cut in half into two triangles. You can't see it, but that's how the game engine makes it. And both triangles are flat with each other. So this brush will be fine on that end, but if I try and play in my map like this, it's going to be broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this point down to here, fix that. So again, using the vertex cool tool can let you make some really interesting shapes with your brushes and uh, help you, uh, yeah, basically solve lots of problems that you might encounter but at the same time can also cause lots of problems if you aren't careful with how you're manipulating things. Again, sorry for the little sidetrack there, it was a bit more advanced tip. Um, but anyway, back to making this hill. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give it the same grass texture as before. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose these two sides. I don't want to choose the rest of it. And I want to make those displacements. So create displacement. And now for what we're going to do, stitching, it needs to be the same. De it needs to be the same power as the adjacent brush. Read the chat. Read the chat. Okay, hold on. I'm checking up on the chat here. Okay, don't worry about vertex editing, Rafi. Again, this is uh, you can come back to this tutorial later in the future. Uh, let's see here, Amstraz. Yeah, again, uh, thanks for following along. But again, if you're lost, uh, can't really backtrack at this point. You'll just have to review the YouTube video for it. Um, again, I'll be doing some of the things over and over again. This is more advanced topics. Displacements are a way to really make your out, outdoor environments come to life and make them feel more natural but at the same time they require a lot of work so I don't blame you that you're kinda lost at this point but again this is a uh, more advanced part of the lesson and you from what you've learned so far if you've been able to follow along so far you have you can start making outdoor environments just fine but uh, if you want to go into more advanced things such as like I said creating hills valleys and uh, again before I finish up I'm gonna show how to make uh, pools of water and actual 3d skyboxes which will add great nice big effects to your uh, maps but again might be a little bit too much to take in we've already been going on for another for an hour and a half or so a uh, little less than that actually but since we had technical issues it's been longer so I'm gonna try and finish this up as fast as possible so I gotta keep trucking here uh, again, I made these two sides into displacements, and now I'm going to invert alpha, so that way they're grassy, and I'm going to paint alpha, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click so I can get dirt, and I'm going to make the path go all the way up here, and then just kind of stop. There we go, and now what I'm going to do here is I want to make these two things blend nicely together. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the noise modifier to this or okay displacement noise and I'm gonna do I think I did zero and ten last time I'm gonna do that again zero and ten there we go now noise really kind of messed this up and look made it look really borked and broken so what I'm gonna do is sewing the sewing technique which you may have seen on here so what that does is it basically if two displacements join at the edges perfectly if they join side by side and they're the same power as each other it'll stitch them together so this hole I'm gonna click so and this little gap here this seam will disappear there it's been stitched closed or sewn closed so now this is kind of a rough and abrupt transition from the slope down here into the ground so I want to sew this slope into the ground so that makes it better I hit sew, nothing happens it doesn't happen because the ground is extended over here here let me show you in the overhead view when I click on this you see the edge of the displacement is right here on this line whereas the edge of our initial ground is all the way over here they don't line up with each other so what I have to do is I have to back this displacement up a bit. There we are. And now I just have to move it in so that way it lines up with that displacement. There. So now this displacement lines up here and that displacement lines up here. They are on the same line. They're the same power. So then now that their edges meet in the same location, same power, I can select both of them, hit sew, and boom, they're stitched together. Or even I don't know if you exactly saw that undo so again there so anyway now we have a nice more even transition but it's still looking a little weird so now I'm gonna do another uh, technique called subdivide let's see how this work subdivide is basically like an automated smoothing process if two things join at very hard angles it smooths those angles out so right now it looks like our ground kind of collides with the hill here rather sharply 
I'm going to hit subdivide and see what happens. Ooh, look at that, see? Nice smooth transition from one into the other. And I'm going to do that with the top of our uh, slope and the bottom one too. So I'm going to choose the bottom of that and I'm going to hit subdivide there. Whoa, okay, that kind of screwed things up. Let's choose all three of them and hit subdivide. There we go, that kept things in order. But there, now it smoothed things out. So now we have a nice smooth transition from flat upward to there. So again, that's why our careful planning with uh, displacements and good use of the tools can make, uh, like if I wanted to make a hill like this with only one displacement, this one, if I never created that hill over here and I just extended that and, rate and rose these points, it would look really jagged and it wouldn't look nearly as good. So this is a nice way to do that. The texture is a bit stretched, but we can modify that with the uh, paint geometry tool or just modifying itself here uh, by increasing its scale, stuff like that. Eh. Yeah, that'll do for now. Anyway, here's our hill. And now uh, what I'm gonna do really quick here, uh, this may seem a little complicated, so don't feel like you need to do this, but I'm gonna show how to make a tunnel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a basic doorway out of brushes. And now the brushes need to be four sides. I'm sorry, displacements can only be four sided. You can't make a displacement out of a brush that only has three sides or five or six or anything else. It needs to be four. It needs to be a square sided brush and that's how you make a displacement. So using that knowledge I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a rocky archway here. I'm going to use a vertex editor here to raise these points up. There we go. I'm going to make the same exact thing on the other side. Oh, and to do that, you can actually, um, there's a really nice, I don't know if I did this in the last tutorial, you can flip objects. I'm going to shift and drag to clone or duplicate. Now you see they're exactly the same, but I want this one facing the other way. What I do is I right click on it in the overhead view or any of these other views in the 2D view, right click, and right down here, flip objects. I can flip it horizontally and vertically. Horizontally, I mean, you'll be flipping it left to right. Vertically means up and down. If I flip it vertically right now, it means vertical in respect to the top down view. It won't do anything. So I'm going to flip it vertically, or I mean, sorry, horizontally there. Now they're, it's flipped around, so now it's a mirror image of the other one. And again, they are, they're all four-sided. And now I'm going to create one more brush to top them. There we go. Now I'm going to need to use the vertex editor to choose these two corners and tuck them in here. Oops. There we go. And then uh, vertex, these two vertex. Tuck it in down there so it matches that. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's too short of a, is it? Nah, I'll leave it. I'll leave it small for right now. Anyway, I need to uh, lower that, it's too big. So I'm gonna shrink it down, there we go. So now we have an archway using creating brushes and using the vertex tool. Again, this is sort of one of the uses of vertex tool. I could have used the cutting tool or clipping tool to make these shapes, but I think vertex tool is a little bit faster for this. So again, just use whatever you're familiar with. And again, also don't feel like you have to follow along with this part of the tutorial, this part's a little advanced. Just tunnels are very useful. And this technique can also be used to create caves and whatnot. So now that I have the basic shape of what I want to make, I select all the visible sides and I'm going to give them a texture. I'm just going to do stone. Oh no, I'm going to do a search for a rock. I'm going to choose a nice gray rock here. Apply. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all of these into displacements and I'm going to make them power of two because there's lots of displacements. There we are, two. So now that they're all four-sided 
they easily become displacements. And now here is a really quick way to make an arch. Again, I'm going to use subdivide. What subdivide does is whenever there's sharp angles like this, like this subdivide is 90 degrees with this one, so it creates a very hard corner here. Subdivide will smooth all that out. Now since I have everything selected, everything will be smooth. There's lots of sharp corners here, so this will look really, really neat. Hope hammer doesn't crash, but here we go. Subdivide. There we go. If we go in here, uh, nice archway, go under that. Even the top is nice and rounded. There we go. So now we have a nice little tunnel that goes through this side and pops out this side up onto the hill. Here we go. File, I'm gonna save. No, and just uh, for the look of things, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start putting some props in here. I'm gonna put a palm tree over here, choose the entity tool. Oh, whoop. don't want a player start. One moment. Got to rearrange my uh, tools here. They got screwed up when hammer crashed. So I got to realign these. So you can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I want to search for a prop static. Again, in the last uh, tutorial, we explained different types of props. Placed it. Uh, let's see here. World model. I'm going to do a search for tree. I got some nice trees here. But I'm kind of partial to palm trees myself. So let's see what we can find. I'm going to do a search for palm. There we go. Apply. There we are. Nice palm tree. I'm going to lower it down a little bit so that way it's not floating out of the ground there. Yeah, it's not holding the ground, so I'm going to move it down a little. There we go. It's lined up the ground nicely. Put a palm tree there. I'm going to shift drag, put a couple palm trees over here. I'm going to change the rotation a little bit. Alt enter opens up the property, swing their angles around, apply. There, make the palm tree face a different way. There we go. So this is a nice little place out here. Now, you know, what? I'm just going to compile and run the map. Let's see what we have so far. Again, run fast. Compiling, you can't see the compile window, it's in the second monitor right now. Okay, here we go. And now, open up Gary's Mod, start new game. Start new game, okay. I can really feel my laptop chugging here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add water. Just uh, water and 3D skybox. That'll conclude our uh, lesson for today. Okay, you know, I don't think uh, Gary's mod's going to work. Again, I have uh, quite a lot open, and I have a live stream software. I have music playing. Well, I had music playing. What happened? There we go. I don't know why I keep stopping. I'm still broadcasting, right? Okay, good. So, anyway, Gary's mod's responding now. Start new game other first map all right again thanks Amstraz and everyone else who's following along I hope I'm not like I said I hope this isn't too intimidating um, I just feel like there's a lot to cover without oh Gary's mod crashed wonderful okay again I have live broad uh, li a live streamer open music playing uh, word pad uh, web browser, world editor, and now a uh, game opens. So I'm going to give this one more shot, or I'm going to give Gary's Mod one more shot to uh, work. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, thanks, Sam Strauss, and everyone else who may have lost, who may have, uh, I guess, fallen behind and lost track of where we're at right now. But, um, you know, thanks for, you know, trying to follow along, uh, you know, it really takes a lot. Really, what's really important is taking the first steps and just trying it. You know, having the effort to even take the first steps, and that's usually where a lot of people get stopped. So you really just have to, you know, just start with what you're comfortable with. If you're unfamiliar with something, just you know, work with it little by little, get comfortable with it. And yeah, I hope uh, the YouTube video will be up shortly after this lesson is done. And again, I'll create timestamps 
So that way you don't need to uh, follow along. Uh, yeah, that way you don't need to watch the whole thing and scrub through it on your own. You can just click on the timestamp and go right to the part you want to learn about. Um, I really hope that's helpful for you. And again, just thanks for sticking along anyway. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's see if this is going to work this time. First map. I don't know if you can hear my laptop, but it is huffing away. You're doing good, Trooper. Hang in there. Okay, here we are. In our map, let's walk outside, see what we got. Ooh la la, we got our bright, nice uh, blue sky going on here. Some nice little fluffy clouds. Whoa, those hints are freaking out. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, here's our palm tree. Got our wall over there. We got our little archway. Is it? Oh, it's just tall enough to walk under. The textures don't look too good, but we can fix those later. And here's our little hill. We can walk up. Ta-da! Oh, but look, big abyss. Not good. So now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a 3D skybox to really fill up this open, vast, like this open emptiness with a real vast open world. So here we are, we're gonna oh, go down here. Again, just kind of showing off our uh, terrain here. Now how smooth it is, uh, the transition from grass to dirt is really nice. It looks even better than it did in Hammer. So anyway, we got a nice little backyard here. I can see the frame rates dropping, so let's quickly uh, disconnect while we still can. I'm gonna quit too. Just less memory that my computer needs, or needs to take up the better. Okay, so back in the Hammer. 3D Skybox is another concept that might be a little hard to wrap your head around, but when you do get it, it opens up a big world of possibilities and lots of fun things you can do. I'm gonna save here. 3D Skybox, basically what it is, is um, it's a way to give the illusion of having a very big world an expansive landscape that looks like it goes on for miles and miles and miles you can make mountains that you know reach the sky you can have oceans that spanned off into infinity you can create tons of things you can have large looming skyscrapers in the distance pyramids uh you know shoot like a, i guess shooting stars you can do tons of neat things that look like they're really big and very far away and the thing is they look like they're actually there so as you walk around you can see them slightly move off in the distance like you can see your perspective on them change ever so slightly so you have a sense of depth it feels like they're actually there but the thing is you can the player can never actually reach there what a sky 3d skybox is is it's like a miniature it's like a model city it's a little tiny diorama a little tiny model that you make outside of the level when I say model, I don't mean like a 3D model. It's just like a little, I think a diorama is the best way to describe it. It's a little tiny shoebox version of a very big area. And what the hammer does, or what the engine, game engine does, is it creates the illusion of that area being super huge and surrounding the level. I'm going to show you how to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to need to zoom out, go out here into the darkness, and we're going to need to create our little shoebox world. I'm going to create this brush here. And what we're going to do is we want it to be all sky texture. So I do a search for sky. And here we go, skybox. Now I want this entire room to be made of sky texture. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to drag it out. It's just going to be a square room. Let's do 512 by 512. I'm going to make it a little bit higher than the rest of the level so that way it doesn't clash with the rest of these lines here and make it easier for us to you know, make sense of it. There we go. And then I'm just going to use shift drag to make our ceiling. Okay, I'm going to make our walls. I'm going to make it a completely cubed box here. I'm going to use shift drag to make the rest of the walls, shift drag, resize, shift drag, 
And there we go. So now we fly inside and here's our encapsulated little room. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create, basically I'm going to have our world surrounded by a bowl, like it's going to be in a valley. So I'm going to create a brush that's going to become a displacement. Creating it just like any other thing. Browse. Uh, search for grass. I want a solid grass texture this time. I don't want one of those two-in-one textures. Here we are. So nice grass. And now I'm going to click only the top one. I don't want all of this selected. I just want the top. Displacement, create, and I'm going to make it four because the player isn't actually going to be able to collide with this. This is just for looks. Boom, super detailed. Okay, now I'm going to give it um, some noise. Well, actually, no, no, I'm not. I'm just going to paint it all. So I'm going to have a fairly big radius, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the edges around. Whoa, that's a little too strong. I'm going to raise the edges around the world here. There we go. Doesn't look like much right now. I'm going to raise this up a little so it's more smooth. Make it more lumpy. Uh, and now what now that we have our uh, basic large landscape here our vast hills with valleys I am going to go ahead and I'm, now this is where it gets important I'm going to create what's called a sky camera I choose an entity I'm gonna do a search for sky sky camera here we go and also I have the sky camera entity chosen I can place it inside of our sky box. Now, as with unlike the light environment entity, its position does matter. It's very important. Chat. Chat. Okay, I found all of them in the. Okay, let's see. Well, I found all of them. Be a small oh is there going to be a small house that you can try to fit yes I am going to show you how to put a uh, we're gonna have actually like a little city maybe a windmill or a farm or something off in the distance I'll explain that here in a sec so anyway uh, the sky camera its position does matter it matters very much what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the very middle of our sky box and we're gonna put it right on the level with the ground right there I'm gonna hit enter boom there we are it's in the ground. Now, here's how the skybox works. I'm going to save really quick. What happens is the skybox or the sky camera entity is related. The skybox, if you want to imagine where the skybox is in relation, like how the player, <clears throat> where the, uh, or at least where the, how the player feels the skybox, skybox exists, from the player's perspective, the skybox is at the very center of the level. You see these blue lines here? Again, that <clears throat> describes or shows you the exact center of your level. Or the origin of the map. Point zero, zero, zero. We zoom in right here. So imagine, in, in the grand scheme of things, again, a sky camera is an illusion. It makes you feel as if this area here that we created is many times its actual size and it's surrounding the map. So the sky camera chooses, or the sky camera basically describes where the center of this giant world is. So if I put, so I put it in the middle of the room and I put it at the level, at ground level here. Because right now the player here, the player start, there's Gordon, he is at ground level you see the teal or sorry the uh yeah the teal line here going left to right that shows the i guess the uh 
zero altitude. Again, this is the origin of the map, the very center. That's where our player is. So that's why the sky camera is there. So anyway, this is getting a little complicated. Again, you kind of just have to play with sky camera to really learn how it works. Or you have to just play around with 3D skyboxes to really learn how they work. But um, that's important to realize or kind of conceptualize to understand when you want to have really nice looking skyboxes where like well i'm not saying uh millennial fair is a really nice looking skybox but in my millennial fair map i mean i take pride in it i worked hard on it uh the path you can see uh the village the truce village off in the distance but you can't actually go there now i tried really hard to make it so that the map the map actually ends just past the uh trees when you walk out of the fair but um and the skybox begins so being able to create a skybox that transitions into the map like have the map transition into the skybox is a very good trick to use like new pork city uh the empire porky building the really large building in the middle with the spikes on the side that large building isn't actually part of the map that building is part of the skybox but it has the illusion of actually being part of the map it's because i built it when i made the tower i made it in relation to the sky camera and I had to take into account how far away it was from the origin. It's complicated. Maybe that could be a more advanced tutorial. I think I might just start confusing people here. So again, sky camera, very uh, basic, I guess, rule of thumb is just have it in the middle of the sky box and at ground level with your diorama here. Now, having that isn't all of it. You hit Alt Enter. There you go. This is the property value. The main thing we want for 3D Skybox is the 3D Skybox scale. This determines how big the world is. If I change it to 1, this basically ruins the whole point of having a Skybox. When we play the game, this will be the same exact size as it actually is. Which here, I'll put a player start in here just to give you a perspective of how small this area actually is. Uh, player. Info, player start. There. This is how big it actually is compared to a human player. But we want it to be a lot bigger. So when I do sky, do the sky camera and do skybox scale, instead of doing 16, you know what? I'm going to do 100. We're going to go overkill here. This thing's going to be huge. Actually, you know what? Let's do 16 because I'm going to be putting in props, and that'll kind of screw things up if I do, do it that way. So let's do 16. Um, here we go. Now, to make the grass look a little bit more realistic, because this is going to be blown up, so it's going to look super blurry, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the texture here, and I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. Maybe ooh, that much. Maybe that's too much, because now you can see it repeating. You can see the pattern off in the distance. It doesn't look too good. So you know what? I'll, uh, I'll raise it up a little bit. There we are. So now the texture's a bit smaller. You can't see the pattern quite as much. Anyway, let's get uh, Gordon out of here. <clears throat> we already have a player start, and we don't want people starting in our skybox. That'll be weird. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting some props in here to make this uh, world feel a bit more inhabited. I'm going to choose a static prop. I'm going to put it over there. And now I'm going to do a search for city. Uh, let's find a nice city, not a city, not one that's destroyed. Oh, they're all destroyed. That's not great. Um, <clears throat> maybe search for building. Well, let's see. Oh no, here's a good search. Search skybox. That'll help out. Cause certain models, like you see how small this palm tree is. That palm tree, in relation to the grid, is super tiny. It's super tiny because this palm tree was made for a skybox. It was made at 1 16th the scale, because 16 is the normal multiplier for skyboxes. Anyway, um, let's take a look here. Tent, uh, tree big. Come on, let's find some good stuff here. Uh, what do we got? A barn. Uh, that could be handy. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, the TF2 buildings. So, I'm going to go ahead, choose those. Whoa, there they are. 
There we are. Let's uh put let's drop these down over here. There they are. So it looks like they're built over there on the hill. Let's see what else we can make here. Building skybox. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Big. Oh no. Okay. Uh, let's shift and drag to duplicate that. Whoa. Okay, we're gonna need to rotate this a bit so it faces the sky camera. There we go. And let's move it upwards. Now you see, most of the building is invisible because when the people made the model, when Valve made this model, they knew that it was going to be in the skybox and the player would never see it from behind. So that's why there's nothing there. So we're going to have to rotate it so that it fits. It works a bit better for our purposes. There we go. Um, I think I broke the barn. Yeah, I did. So I'm going to... We got our second model. Let's uh, turn it back into the barn. Okay, skybox. Okay, where was it? There we are. Hmm. Did I not hit apply or something? Okay, this just seems to be a glitch with hammer right now. It's not showing up, so I'm just gonna create it again from scratch. New prop static, browse, skybox, sky barn. Okay, it looks like it's actually a barn this time. There we go. Again, uh, have it over there. Actually, not, no, let's have it over here. Whoa. I'm having a hard time seeing it. There we go. Raise it a little bit higher. Actually, no, no that looks bad, because... What's happening, why the model's disappearing like that, is because, here, there's a setting inside Hammer. Tools, options, 3D views, um, model render distance. This explains if a model's really far away, it won't render it. It'll show a block instead. So if I increase this, I can see things further, like... A model can be farther away from the camera and it'll appear as a model. So there we go. I cranked that up so now it'll look like a barn even if I look at it from a distance. So anyway, now that we have that set up, it's floating, that doesn't look good. So I'm going to lower this a little. There we go. And how about one more because we have two props over there in that side. So that side's getting a lot of attention. Let's put a prop over here on this side too. Prop. There we go. Again, we want to uh, search for skybox models. Skybox. And um, let's go way down. Let's see what's down here. Train signals, blast furnace. Eh. Ooh, a rocket. Why not? Rocket tower. Let's do both. Rocket tower. Very good. Let's put it down so it's in the ground a bit. I'm going to duplicate, shift drag, and I'm going to shift drag, and I'm going to put it back again so it's right on top. Browse, uh, rocket. There we go. Okay, it looks like it's off center a little bit, so let's try and position that so it looks like it's in place. There we go. That looks good. Maybe we can move both of them. Well, let's move the rocket up a little. There we go, that looks pretty sweet. Again, I'm gonna put a player start in here just so you can get an idea of how small everything is. There we go, so the rocket's not very impressive, none of this is very impressive, but when we go into the game, they're all gonna appear 16 times larger than what they actually are. So I think we're all done. Uh, we got the skybox, oh wait, you know what? Here, this is really gonna throw you through a loop. Sorry about this. But now we're gonna create another sun. Yes, it's going to be very... Uh, okay, this isn't really a sun sun. It doesn't create any light. What this is, is this is the visual effect of creating a, sun's fl a sun flare. If we look up in the sky, we'll see a glowing orb. We'll do an entity 
we'll do a search for sun environment sun and this goes this entity goes in your skybox now this is where the position also the position matters for this my sun was shining upwards into the left so I'm gonna put it in the bottom right so therefore when it casts light it casts light in all directions now again when I say cast light I mean the theoretical sun will cast light in every direction so I'll put it up here way up in the sky over here in this corner because that way the shadows make sense the shadows it'll look weird if the sun is over here in this corner or up here it'll make the shadows look weird because when the player looks up the sun will appear in this area of the sky but the shadows will look like the sun is coming from over here again this is all something that takes a lot of tweaking and playing around with to really get the hang of and again I can't stress enough this is not the actual sun this is not create light this is just the sun flare when the player looks up into the sky this will create the glow that looks like the sun this is the property page for it I want its properties to match the same as the one I made so again it shines to the up and to the left and I think the angle I used um, the old way let's see here so yeah we want to set use angles to yes because I don't know it has something to do with the way half-life or it, it's just the way source used to handle the Sun we use angles now we use angles and pitch so you have to set that to yes if you want your Sun to look correctly uh, and the pitch I think I use negative 65 well, it doesn't need to be exact as long as it's close and then Sun color I don't know why they chose that color I'm gonna choose a nice uh, whitish yellow there we go and then the size of the Sun 16 should be the default just a high Sun during the afternoon obviously if it's a uh, later like during sunset you'd probably want the Sun a lot larger because the Sun appears larger when it's closer to the horizon change the color stuff like that so again uh, angles I just want the angles and the pitch to match my light underscore environment entity that actually creates the light rays so that way this um, the Sun looks like it matches the shadows and yeah so anyway there we are uh, it doesn't need a name and then give it its color yes make sure you use angles to set the yes and apply we're done so again this isn't necessary this is just more bells and whistles so anyway I think we're done so let's file save fast Oh wait, you know what? Before we did that, I wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to create, or I wanted to do a water tutorial. So instead of having to wait for a Hammer to open up and load and do all that stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to complete that section of the tutorial. So that way we can fin we can finish up this lesson. It's been two hours and ten minutes since I started. Uh, we'll finish up this lesson with seeing it all working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to expand this room one more time move this wall down I want to create another square plot of land here 512 by 512 there we go Oops. and good And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to keep it that, that height. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to lower it a little. So it's about the same height as, I'm still broadcasting, right? Okay. I think I hit some weird button and started doing some weird shortcut stuff. Okay, I'm going to make it, uh, let's make it a little, little higher than that. There we are. Comes right up there to the wall. I'm going to drag these walls out. I got to give this side of the wall a texture too now that we can see it. There we go. And I'm going to shift, shift and drag to give myself an end wall there 
There we go. And I'm going to give this one a no draw on this side because the player won't be able to see this one. This is where this guy's going to be. Okay. Bring the sky in a little bit closer. Now I just got to make sure that this room is airtight again. Got to bring the walls and ceiling in and the floor. Okay, make sure these match up. Come on, bring them down. Okay, take a closer look. Looks good. Ceiling, walls, floor. Okay, good. Our room is airtight again. And now, you know what? I'm going to. I don't want that. I want the uh, TF2 grass. There we go. So let's see. Create a displacement. Create power of three. Boom. Invert alpha because we want nice, nice grass there. And now I'm going to need to make it dip down into a, like a bowl because that's where our, that's where our water is going to be. So make it fairly big. There we go. That looks like it's right in the middle, I think. I think. Let's see. Now where is the middle on this? I'm going to say it's right here. So anyway, I'm going to lower my radius just a little. There, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start right-clicking to lower the terrain. There we go, a little bit more, more, more. Okay, I'm going to left-click and hold. Big sinkhole here. Whoa, too far. Bring that up a little. There we go. So now we have this big bowl here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting it, give it some, uh, give it some dirt here, because I'm going to imagine that anything under the water is going to not have grass growing under it. It's underwater. So let's give it a little bit of dirt bowl there, a little dirt basin. Eh, that's good for now. Well, maybe a little bit more up here. Okay, that should be good for now. And now to actually add the water. So again, I made this a, dipla a displacement, so all of its other sides have disappeared. You may have noticed that uh, it was glitching through on the wall here. Anyway, that's not a problem anymore. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose no draw as my main texture. And now water is just a solid brush. Nothing special about it. Just choose the brush tool. I'm going to make it the full size of this plot of land I just made. Five twelve by five twelve. Nope. There, five twelve by five twelve. Let's lower it down a little bit. Hit enter. Now it's an all no draw brush. Uh, the bottom of it seems to be a little low. I want to bring it up just a bit so that way it's not going into the ground here. Before it was all the way down here. I don't know if you noticed it was that far down. So it's actually clipping into the brick there. I don't want that. I want to raise it up just a little so that way it's at least flush with the blocks of the ground. And then what I'm going to do is using the face editor, just click on the top one here, do browse, and just do a search for water. Now these don't look like water at all. These are just placeholders. These are just uh, thumbnails. It'll look a lot better in game. The one I like is called um, Nature. I think nature's in its name. Nature waters, water canals, water clear. I'm going to do a search for nature. I'm pretty sure nature is in its name. Mm. Waters, canal, city, murky. Waters, canals, city. Actually, no. Let's just do. Uh, let's look. Let's put a TF2 water in there. TF. Uh, now water. Let's look down here. TF2 water is quite a bit different looking than uh, other water. So here we are. Water murky. I want something that, that's kind of clear. Water two fort. Two fort has some pretty nice water. It's clear, but at the same time, not too clear that you can't see it. We hit apply. And boom, there we go. As you can see, when you look at it here, it actually it has reflections. It looks like it's all wobbly and everything. It has bump mapping on it. So now what I do is you just choose your brush, and then you just choose how deep you want your water to be. Click and drag the top, and we'll just drag it down. There we go. Over there, it looks a little too jagged, I think. So you know what? We're just going to put it down a little bit there. There we go. Got a nice little bowl of water there. 
swim around, throw some stuff in, and that's it. All when uh, when the source engine sees a brush, a solid blood, a solid brush that has no draw on all the all the sides except for one, and the top one has a water texture. It does the rest. It'll behave like water. It'll look like water. That's all you got to do to make water. So there you go. So here we are. Let's uh, go ahead and let's compile our map. And now this is kind of where v, uh, where Viz comes in handy. If I turned Viz off and ran the map, we would not see the water. The water would still be there. You'd, you could splash in it. You can uh, throw stuff in it and the stuff will float. But you won't see it. It'll cause weird graphic errors. Viz has to do with the um, optimization and rendering end of your map. So that's why you need Viz running. Um, fast will do, but note since this is the last compile for today, I'm going to set everything to normal so we can get a nice looking map. Well, it won't look super nice, but you know, it'll be better than fast. Go ahead and hit OK. Yeah, the water is a little too high, uh, roller steam, but eh, whatever. I think it's just for the sake of just having some depth so we can really play around in it. Okay, it looks like the compile process is finished. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I am going to open up. You know what? I'm going to close out a hammer now. Thank you, hammer. But uh, the less things running in the background, the better. So there we are. Let's open up. Uh, let's open up Gary's mod here. All right, I'm going to try to catch up on the chat a little bit while we wait. All right. Okay, cool. Let's load it up. Load it up in the other screen. So here we are. Start new game. Other. First map. Our first map has really come a long way since we started, but uh, yeah, as um, where was it? As a Zeta son of a digit said, the possibilities are endless. Really, uh, at the completion of this tutorial, there are so many things you can do. So anyway, here we are, our humble beginnings. This little room, hallway, lantern, our little bucket. Kick the bucket. We go outside. Oh no, what happened? I don't know. We aren't done yet, people. Okay, our sky's broken. Oh, but look at that. We can still kind of see what's going on. You know what? I think I know what was wrong. I think I know what was wrong. Ugh, what in the world? Yeah, our water's there. Okay, something seriously borked. Uh, let me disconnect. Okay, Hammer, we need you. Come back. Okay, there's a little climatic ending there. I was expecting to end on a very flawless note there. Okay, let's take a look here. You know what? I'm going to open up uh, one of my other levels here, just a reference to make sure I did I did everything right. Because it doesn't make sense why, nothing, why it looked all weird like that. So I'm going to open up... Uh, Millennial Fair. Okay, let's fly up to this. Here's my uh, skybox for Millennial Fair. Hmm. Skybox, yeah. Yeah, looks good, looks good. Um, hmm. Why is it broken? File, close. Let's open up first map again. Let's compare them. Yeah, the whole map is sealed, I believe. Maybe the water is too close to the ground. I'm going to try lifting that up a little because the water didn't look like it was working either. I'm going to lift the water up a little so that way it's not right up against the floor. Have a little bit of space between the two. Hmm. Here we are. Okay, let's go... Oh, that might explain it. There's a model floating outside of the skybox. Okay, there we go. 
That's another one of the problems. That was, I guess, considered a leak because the map had something it had to think about outside of the map and wasn't looking good. So, anyway. This, ooh, that one's kind of outside too. We're going to have to move that in. Okay, we lost our skyscraper, but whatever. No, no not whatever. I want it. Let's, uh, let's bring it back. So, here we go. Shift drag, make a duplicate. Alt enter opens up the property page. Skybox. Come on, we wanna where did our skyscraper go? And... Oh, I saw it. I saw it. Building skybox, there we are. Okay, make sure it's inside the skybox. And I guess really the most important thing is making sure that the center is inside the skybox. The center is this little X. So that's inside. The X for this is I brought this inside a bit. There we go. Let's try it now. We don't have anything floating outside the level, which I really think was the issue there. File, save, let's recompile. You know what, let's recompile fast. Well, normal didn't take that long. Let's do normal again. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, that wasn't a... Uh, didn't exactly turn out the way we wanted, huh? Okay, so it finished compiling. Luckily, Gary's Mod's already open. Start new game. Other. First map. Okay, come on. I really hope that was the only issue. Why does my media player stop playing? Rain. Anyway, let's go outside. Oh no, come on. What in the world? Alright. Troubleshooting time. Big dark there. What's happening there? What in the world? Okay, you know what? Maybe I try doing things a little too complicated, too fast. I guess this is a good demonstration that uh, when mapping, it's good to save and test often because who knows? I may have made the mistake a long time ago and I could have troubleshot it then. Anyway, let's go ahead. Let's just get rid of all of our props. Sorry. It's not going to look as cool. And, um, yeah, let's say that's it. Actually, is that it? Let's see. What is it? What is it? Sky King. Uh, maybe. I'll try that later. But the thing is, it shouldn't. That shouldn't affect it. If anything, it should look like. It should look like the player is clipping through the ground. It shouldn't screw up the sky the way it is. A skybox in the skybox? Um. I don't think there is. So let's see here. There we go. Okay, it must have been one of the models screwing things up. But anyway, we walk over here. Ta da! There's our skybox going on. Feel like we're nice, surrounded by hills. Not exactly sure what broke it exactly, but um, one of those models just must have been bad. But anyway, here we are. Our finished map. There's our water. Throw ourselves in it. Float around. Works just fine. Do, do, do. But yeah, I think the sky camera might be a little too low. I think that's why it's creating this uh, really dark shadow here. Because the skybox can actually cast shadows on the map, I believe. 
So if their shadows being cast onto the sky camera, the shadows get applied to the map themselves. So yeah, the sky camera might be a little low. We can tweak that. Um, I'll test that, I think, before I finish up. But anyway, there we are. This is uh, showing that everything does work the way it's supposed to. Uh, obviously, you could use some tweaking, but in general, I'd say it's a success, finally. Oh, let's check to see if our sun works. Yep, there's our sun. Looking good. So anyway, there we go. So that, I guess, uh, officially concludes the tutorial for today. Uh, I'm, if you want to stick around, I'm going to go ahead and try and troubleshoot some of this stuff. Basically, all I'm going to do is move the uh, skybox camera up a little. Just a little. Maybe just one unit up. There we go. Someone said make the grass smaller. All right, maybe I'll do that really quick. I just compiled, but I'll do it again. Come on. Oh, the face editor, whatever. Make the grass even tinier. There we go. Okay, compile one more time. <clears throat> okay, it's done. Open up Gary's Mod. Start a new game. Other. First map. Yeah, there we go. Lifting the uh, skybox out of the ground a little bit removed that uh, lighting effect we were having. Also probably makes our pond look a little bit nicer. Yeah, that was looking kind of eerily dark for a little bit. Still does, but I think that's just because the water is murky. So anyway, here we are. Uh, yeah. Mission success. So... There we are. You can make outdoor areas like this of your own imagination. And I'm really interested to see what you all make. Uh, again, I went, I guess I kind of failed to um, do a sort of short show and tell that I wanted to do for the live stream. So maybe during the week, maybe the middle of the week, maybe Wednesday or something, or if you want to wait till next weekend, we can do a uh, Skype call and I'll show off. Uh, we can do, like again, sort of like a... Like I said, show and tell. People can show off the maps they've been making, stuff like that. Alright, well, thanks for joining me. I'm going to check out the chat, get this uploaded to YouTube so you guys can start uh, catching up and you know brushing up on the stuff you may have missed. And, yeah. Again, this is Jack signing off. Thank you very much. See you next time.